Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. Today, we're going to be talking about game revenues as well as a little bit of kind of like a news update because without the news update, it's a little bit harder to have no context for the revenue, right? And so this one, as you guys know, is about the mobile games, predominantly CN based. However, there are a couple of like KR and JP ones as well. And it is certainly going to be for the month that has just passed September. And so if we do come across a few different games, which I don't really have any context for, do let us know something about it, maybe like the updates the events, what's going on, the banner potentially down in the comments below. And on top of that, remember that this is not going to be an exhaustive list of all games. Again, very much CN biased. So App Annie and Sensor Tower, App Store and Google Play, this is predominantly where the revenue numbers come from. However, we're going to kick things off with Honkai Gakuin 2. Revenue is not doing too well. However, it is a very, very old game. So that is pretty possible. Now, Honkai Impact 3, let's have a look at this one. Whoa, so that is, a, that is a big juicy revenue, my dudes. And if it is your first time watching through one of these revenue videos, remember that this is in CNRMB and these figures are in one. So one of these corresponds to 10,000. So this is actually 951 times 10,000. Now, let's have a look at this one. We've got the China server and JP server, Korea, Taiwan, and that is going to be America slash global. So for the global server, compared to last month, we had an increase in 67% and 51% for iOS and Android respectively. And this can predominantly be attributed to this over here, which is a new Hersha. Now, if she appeared in the games that I played, which I actually kind of do play HI3, I would pull for her. And I certainly would have pulled for her. And she came with patch 6.0. So that would have been very, very hype for the Honkai players. Congratulations on your new Hersha. And so the release of that Hersha makes complete sense in terms of the revenue over here. However, we are going to move on and it's probably, oh, okay. It's Tears of Temis. I thought we were going into Genshin. Mm, the revenue is not doing too good uh, in terms of the global server. It is very popular in China though. All right, and so we have Mihoyo over here and it looks like that is um that is not too much change. And I think I do have some context for this one. So as usual, Genshin Impact's revenues are utterly eclipsing every other game. However, in terms of the percentage change, there wasn't too much. And that's not too surprising considering we are moving on to the Tainari banner over here. Now, he is okay. He is cool, but he is not like a Raiden or a Kazaha, or he's not like either utterly giga busted or super waifu. That's not to say that his revenues were actually bad considering he is the first five-star new Dendro, like new kind of element unit that was released in the game. The reality is, is that that patch launched in August. And because it launched in August, a lot of that spend, a lot of that revenues was accounted back then. Now, being able to sustain this kind of growth, that's really freaking impressive, but it's Genshin. All right, moving on, we do have Omyoji over here, which as usual is not doing too well in the global server, but man, the Chinese love it. And I say that every freaking time. Another Omyoji spinoff. Let's move on to Arknights over here. Now, ooh, that is a steep decline. All right. And so for this one over here, I believe that Arknights, especially on the global server, was predominantly reruns. However, they did drop a new unit. This one over here, Fear Meta. And if I pronounce that badly then please let me know down in the comments but my god I would have rolled for her like holy moly for me personally this is certainly one of my types however from a meta point of view apparently she wasn't overly impactful so her sales weren't that good other than the release of fear meta the other banners were predominantly reruns and so I can kind of understand why the revenues were so steep and so moving on from Arknights, next we are going to have GFL. Now GFL, I kind of feel like they are just like chugging along. It's not going to be too much percentage change on all of the servers, especially because they are working on their new game, which is Project Neural Cloud. I'm pretty sure for the global release, this is known as simply Neural Cloud. And we are actually going into CBT for the global version, which is really exciting because this is a pretty fun game. Unfortunately, if you are finding out about this closed beta test from this video itself, it's already a little bit too late considering the deadline has already passed. So the guys are probably actually already testing, uh, I believe later in the month. And so skipping past a few, we have Azure Lane over here. And oh my God, the, the sales of Azure Lane never ceases to amaze me. Although when I actually go ahead and have a look at the content, I can understand why. I mean, can you understand why? Why Azure Lane does so freaking well? I hope you can. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've never really been an Azure Lane enjoyer. However, what I can tell was that there was a release of a new Musashi over here and there were a lot of skins, like a lot of really, really freaking cultured skins. However, I would argue that this for Azure Lane is BAU. So revenues, 
pretty normal. All right, and so moving on from Azulene, next we're going to have Ethergazer, which is an interesting one. So for those of you who do know Azulene, who have played Azulene, Ethergazer is an upcoming action RPG, which is a little bit similar to Punishing Grey Raven, and it is being developed by your boys that kind of did Azulene. So we have Yongshi as well as your star over here. So I'm going to come over here, Ethergazer, Yongshi, your star. Now, this game right now is currently in CBT, if I'm not wrong. And so again, if you are finding out about the CBT, like from this video, it's already ongoing. I actually do have the email in my inbox. So if you guys have tried the CBT, do let us know how it is down in the comments below. However, I did actually try the CN version of this one over here because again, it's a CN based game. It just wasn't my cup of tea because it's similar to Punishing Grey Raven, which also isn't really my cup of tea anymore. And so after Ed the Gazer, what do we have? We've got uh, Shining Nikki. We've got the other shining nikki crap i can't remember which one's which but they're both nikki's they Ooh, ow okay that's a little bit worse than i thought it'd be this one is actually the og nikki game and if i come forward to the shining nikki the, you can see the revenues are exceptional in the china server however on the global hmm I thought it'd be doing a little bit better. And so speaking of Punishing Grey Raven, we do have them coming up next. And ooh, that is a steep decline for the global server. Now, for Punishing Grey Raven, they had the new release of an Ice Tank Chrome Glory. Now, from what I remember about the Punishing Grey Raven meta, Chrome Glory is actually quite relevant. However, not a waifu bro is not a waifu and unfortunately a lot of the people playing pgr are quite hardcore and waifu enjoyers however those revenues are not bad at all it is certainly a very very stable game i would not expect end of service for punishing gray raven for a long time <gasps> whoa holy mother of god look at that one my guys and so my guys welcome to the tower of fantasy revenues as you can see over here to the left this is the china server it's not doing too hot we are doing about like five to ten times better on the this is the japanese server this is the Korean server for those of you who don't know the Korean servers, the Korean law for mobile service games. They actually have to have their own separate server. That's why Korea, well, you don't see any Koreans in Tower of Fantasy because they're on their own server. However, the Japanese servers, it actually encapsulates a lot of the global servers as well. I'm pretty sure that means global. And then on the far right hand side, we also have the Taiwan server. So all three servers are actually doing quite well. The China server is not doing too bad. It doesn't look like it's bleeding players or revenue at least. However, one observation I do have to make is that when Tower of Fantasy was released, the numbers were actually looking more like this and not like this so i it's fallen from its former glory is all i can say i do have some relatively high hopes for the jp aka global server and for the global server we did get the release of uh, artificial island 1.5 as well as the claudia banner over here and my god who wouldn't pull for that, huh? <laughs> but alas, the interest in Tower of Fantasy is sure to drop, simply because like it's the launch hype and then now we're just gonna be stabilizing in terms of players and eventually revenue. Now Alchemy Star, oh, what the frick? Oh my God, that is um, that that is really, really sad to see. That is approaching like really, really bad numbers. So I'm gonna go have a look at what exactly Alchemy Stars has to offer. Um. That is uh, Azure Lane. Oh, Azure? Oh, yeah. That is certainly Azure Lane levels of um, culture. However, on top of that, they did have the release of two new characters, but unfortunately, the game does seem to be bleeding out despite the constant updates and the gorgeous skins. Mmm, ouch. So I am going to skip through a couple of these ones because they're not really relevant. The only one would be probably the next one over here, Ensemble Stars Music. It looks like it's not doing too well on the global server. I kind of get it. But I'm going to go ahead to go to the Japanese based ones. Oh, we've got Figure Fantasy over here doing still okay. And I believe I saw Revive Witch back a little bit over here, somehow still surviving with the Soul Tide on the right hand side. Now let's move through, move through and have a look at the JP ones because the JP ones are pretty freaking cracked. And of course, your Naruto one as well. <laughs> What the frick is that revenue? So starting off with the Fate Grand Order, the FGO, we do have a minor decrease in revenue. However, I did have a flick through some of their updates. Honestly, there wasn't too much to talk about, especially for the month of September. So for that reason, I can understand why there was a minor drop in the revenue over here. There was like some like Omyoji looking girl, like Dani Dani or something like that. But we are going to move on to Guardian Tales over here, in which we have a minor drop as well. This one is a little bit unexpected because they do have a new update over here, Cressel, and they also had the World 15 update. And it's not very often you get a new world in Guardian Tales. So I would have thought it would be doing a little bit better, but 
maybe not so much. I unfortunately did miss Artery Gear Fusion, which is this one over here. The revenues are doing pretty well. However, I would have thought that it would have skyrocketed as well because it is the Madoka collab over here. A lot of people could say that the player base was simply saving and so there wasn't too much revenue. However, like a Madoka collab, the IP is pretty big. I would assume a little bit of growth not a slight decline. All right, coming back to the JPKR based ones, uh, the next one is gonna be Precon, which is nice. And there is a slight decline on the global server. I kind of get it because if I remember correctly, Precon only had Halloween reruns for the month of September, which is a little bit boring, but to be able to sustain revenues like that on a rerun, pretty good. Not too bad. Next, we've got Bang Dream over here, not doing too good in the global server. Uh, Marika, oh. <laughs> Uh, rip this one over here. So this is a um, this is an end of service, my guys, for the China server. And then moving past that one, we have the Shadowverse. Now, mm, it's I mean it is an old game. I do appreciate that. And the fact that it's bringing in so much revenue, it freaking doubled in revenue in Japan. Like that is a fantastic cash cow. So kudos to you guys, Psy Games. This one is another Eden. Unfortunately, I don't have any context for these numbers. It looks like it's just chugging along. I think that this game is kind of like Punishing Ray Raven in which you wouldn't expect an end of service anytime soon. However, moving on next, we're going to have Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and I don't know, man, there are a lot of massive Yu-Gi-Oh! fans. I am a fan, but like I don't unfortunately play too much of Duel Links or any card games or even the CCG, like the real life CCG either. Now. Master Duel, that is a that is quite a significant decline to what I remember from like six months ago. And if I actually compare that back to this one over here, Duel Links, it kind of looks like Duel Links might be doing better than the other one, the Master Duel. And if you guys know why, like do let me know down in the comments. I am very interested considering this game was doing exceptionally well a couple of months ago. And so next we have Blue Archive over here. And oh my God, that is some big juicy revenue. now. This is a pretty big one because what we had for the month of September in Blue Archive, uh, this one, we had the Wakamore banner. And the Wakamore banner, what she represented, especially in terms of JP, this was the former one year anniversary. However, because we have an accelerated pace on the JP, I'm oh, sorry, on the global server for Blue Archive, this came not as a one year anniversary thing but she is the first of her kind in terms of like, she is the equivalent of like a prefez or like a gala banner in which it was double rates. And so there was a lot of reason to spend. There was a lot of reason to pull for the Wakamore. If not for her, then for her double rate banner itself. All right, and so with that said, let's keep on moving. We've got Nier Reincarnation. Not too surprising. It's just not doing too hot. Unfortunately, I'm not too big of this uh, walking simulator game. I know I might get flamed for calling it that, but that really is how it felt. Now, let's have a look at Uma Musume over here. Pretty derby. <laughs> I'm looking at these KR numbers because whilst there is no global server yet, there is some news on the KR side. And it's really interesting because they essentially really boycotted this game really hard. Kakao Games unfortunately made a couple of like undesirable changes to the Korean server. And so that resulted in something like this, which is protesting in the form of a horse carriage. Now, if you guys don't understand this, how the Koreans usually protest is that they get like protest trucks or protest buses and send them to the headquarters of the company that they're protesting. They send this horse carriage <laughs> to Kakao Games HQ, which is utterly hilarious. I freaking love it. But that is going to be uh, that is going to be the reason as to why this Korean server is falling down a cliff over here. Now I can't really explain the Taiwanese server. I don't know how the publishers are handling that one, but it still looks like the JP servers are still going strong. And I don't think there's any word of a global server still. I don't know, man. <laughs> Where is it? So many people are hyping this up, but honestly, I don't think Oma Musume is going to do too well on the global service. And so next we have Toho Lost World. I'm pretty sure there's a global server. And I'm pretty sure I say that like every single time we watch this video. And I say the same thing about World Flipper as well. Revenue is not looking too bad. However, I would imagine that the interest in the global server, unfortunately, is comparatively small compared to some of the other games that we have seen in this video. Now, Heaven Burns Red, I do believe this is the last game of the video. It is declining a little bit. It was probably tripled the revenue last time I looked at it like a couple of months ago, but I can kind of understand that. But with Heaven Burns Red out of the way, I do believe that is going to be the last one of the video. And as you can see, that is the credits. So uh, <laughs> all in all, a pretty crazy month with, uh, especially with the horse carriage thing. 
a couple of exciting things happening, such as the Project Neural Cloud CBT, as well as the Ether Gazer one over here. So this one and this one. But that is going to wrap up this video because yeah, there's nothing left to talk about, I guess. Again, my guys, let me know if I am missing a little bit of context for any of these games that we did cover today. I did my research, but you know, I'm not freaking bulletproof. And if you guys do have any requests as to other games you wanted me to cover, then let me know down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell. However, as, uh, as your boy Chrome once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.